converted. And the thing that really converted me to it was using nature items. So things like leaves and grasses from outside. And I got these amazingly detailed fine prints. Um, finer than I've been able to get via any other means. You know, I use nature with silk screens. Um, I use it with um, stencils and stamps, but I that is by far the best way of getting really fine prints. So that converted me and I tried out many other things that I was doing at the time with the jelly plate. I'm going to have to stop these rattling on here, aren't they? They're going to get really irritating. And sometimes, just so you know, my tummy, which is quite large, pushes the table forwards and hits the tripod. Uh, and I'll try and notice if it happens, as otherwise you get a little rattle in the background. So apologies about all of that. Um, so in the time since, so I published this book with everything I could think of to do with it. Fantastic tool. And it was, and it's great. And it's a really good book. But since then, I've discovered a lot of new ways of using it. And the more I use it, the more I play with it, the more I discover. Um, so we're going to have an absolutely fantastic year. I am totally convinced that by the end of the year, your jelly plates will never get abandoned in the drawer again. They will probably end up looking something like mine, which I'm now going to show you. So we're going to go through, first of all, this requirements list that I've sent you um, just to tell you which are the essential bits I know I've put essentials and other use but it's not very easy to divide things it depends what you want to do so much easier for me to go through this with you so let's start with the jelly plates now this is going to horrify not a lot of you probably but these are mine now I do have a lot because I teach and I um used to teach at the studio so I had to have enough jelly plates for everybody and I would have six people here and so I needed six of most shapes otherwise we would get arguments so that's why I have such a lot but this is how I have always kept them and I know on the um, packaging it, it's kind of quite scary really um, you know keep it in the sheets look after it put it in its protective cover etc etc I have never done anything of the sort it's completely not in my nature to. Now, if you are somebody who is organized and tidy, that is fine. We're all different and vive la difference. It makes for fantastic art, but I'm not. I am just messy and chuck it around, I'm afraid. And it was never gonna work for me if I had to put this thing away every time. So I didn't, I just kind of, to be honest with you, you know, if I was using one like this and finished, it's likely to just get chucked somewhere behind me. Um, I leave them, as you can see, dirty. I don't worry about there being bits of paint on them. They are slightly discoloured, you know, they're not the lovely clear, um, I notice this when I'm photographing them, they're not the nice clear um, colour that they were when they were new, but they are absolutely fine. They're very tough things. So if you've been leaving yours in its packet, I'll just quietly pick off a bit of acrylic, which is, you know, just one of the benefits, to be honest, of leaving it on the plate, because it's lovely to peel off. Um, if you are one of the people who's had yours, you know, and felt very nervous that you would ruin it, honestly, you won't. Look, it's really, really tough. I have skidded on one of these at a show when demonstrating, and it, it, I came to more harm than the jelly plate did. So the only things, the only ways you are going to damage this, there's two or three. One, um, I've never tried this, but it, it says on the product, don't use oil-based products. Now, there's probably somewhere, somebody somewhere who has and has had no problems with them, but I've avoided it because my guess is that these plates are made from some sort of um, petroleum um, derivative and that possibly an oil product might cause them to degrade or melt down. And if that did happen to me, it wouldn't bother me too much because I would just view that as extra texture on my plate. But I don't use oil products, oil-based products anyway. I don't like the smell. It makes my nose bung up. And I'm so messy, um, I don't want to have to basically baste myself in turpentine and shower in it to get clean. So I stick with water-based products. So I've got no problems on that. That said, interestingly, I'm just looking at this one here, which was one that I lent to somebody on um, a recent retreat I taught in um, Planidlos. And I don't know quite what paint this lady had, um, but I couldn't get it off when I tried to just wipe it with a baby wipe after the workshop. I mean, it is now it's dry. It's peeling off and we'll have a try in our first session. See if I can get that off because I bet you I can. There is a, an almost foolproof way of getting off, And that's hers on the back as well. She had these. Um, I don't know what they were. These paints. Um, 
that she insisted on using you know you always get that don't you um and they have stained the jelly place but i bet you i can get that off and if i can't you know i won't die that's the way i look about it there's so much awful stuff going on in the world um i am not going to get fretted up about the jelly plate so don't feel frightened of them you won't damage them don't put oil based stuff on them don't put sharp things on them because they'll you'll you know you'll pierce you'll basically pierce them um you know i have cut some of mine up so that's basically what's going to happen if you put a knife in it it's going to cut i did these with um deckle edge scissors because i wanted smaller plates and i fancied having this deckle edge which is it's rather nice actually it looks a bit like the edge of a postage stamp when you use it and because I've got so many uh, not bragging here um, I decided I could afford to cut one up and actually I encourage my students to cut them up because they're really interesting to play with these and we'll look at that in um, in one of the following sessions um, so but knives scissors those will harm them and the other thing that will harm them let me see if I can find it which I discovered was he says disgrace look at all my these are all my little bits look from chopped up jellies look at this one how cute is that so these some of these little ones i have in my sketch sketching um sort of traveling sketch kit this size and they just allow me to take little jelly prints and little texture prints when i'm out and about it's not what i'm looking for I want to find you my damaged plate, the only one I really have damaged permanently. Um, so, they're sticky, they're sticky. It would be at the bottom, wouldn't it? It just would be right at the bottom. I am, I'm kind of mildly ashamed as I take these apart. Because when I say I don't clean them, I really do mean I don't clean them. You know, that has actually still got on it the remains of a beautiful leaf print. I don't know if you can see the veins here, um, but that will come off fine. You know, it doesn't matter. That's my newest jelly plate. Um, this one is from, um, is it Gel Press? All the rest are from Jelly Arts um, because that's who made them um, when I was buying them. This one I think might be Gel Press. It, it looks, is it marginally thinner? I don't know. I mean, I've heard on the grapevine that Gel Press is the same company that made them for Jelly Arts, so I don't know, but they both work fine. Um, but this is the one I was looking for. So this one, I, um, as I do, I finished printing with it and I chucked it behind me and behind me happened to be the radiator. Now that was very handy to hang my jelly plate on. You know, I often hang them over chairs and things behind me. Hung it on the radiator. The radiator came on in the evening and it melted, um, it melted tracks into my, you know, it melted tracks into my jelly plate. And those are, um, can we see on the end? You know, those those are just in there. They're dints. They're melt. It's completely melted out. Um, so all I did, to be honest with you, is I turned it the other way and melted two more on purpose. So I've now got this nice plate with this sort of grid in the corner and I use that for printing you know that with a nice little stamp or a leaf or something in here could make a really pretty little composition and it actually makes glorious um prints just on its own and it has another side you know so I'm not too worried imagine looking at the edge here it looks as though somebody's been nibbling it yeah I'm wondering has somebody chopped it was this one I chopped up in the first place I don't remember it as being so but it looks it <laughs> looks a bit nibbled um and it's got a back, so I can use the back. So I'm really not too worried about that. So play, you know, just get out your plates and use them and don't feel too worried about them. Size-wise, the reason I bought this recently is this is a new size. Um, the ones I've had for years are um, an 8x10, um, which is this one, a 6x6 six and a 7x5. And those inches, I'm talking in inches here, I think in inches, I'm afraid. Um, so those of you that are really good. Oh, look at that one. Sorry. Look at that. Look at that. That was one where I cut a middle out of. One that I'd already trimmed down just because I could and just to see how that printed. So we can play with all these things during this year. Um, a 7 by 5 those were the first ones I had and they are I still think if you're you know they're the most the sizes I use most often I mean you've basically got a nearly a five sheet of paper a nearly a four sheet of paper 
and a square six by six sheet of paper. And those are nice sizes. I then added in a five by three, which is a little baby jelly, um, which is really useful for small items, for sketchbook work, um, for when you haven't got a lot of space. And this was the first one that I used to take out with me um, in my sketchbook before I started chopping them up. And then the only other size that I have bought is this one because it was brought out and this is actually slightly larger than A4. I think this is a 12 by 10. Um, so that is slightly bigger than A4, which is really useful because sometimes it does slightly irritate me that on my 8 by 10, there's always a gap around the edge on an A4 sheet of paper. Um, I always fill it with something, but that takes time. So I decided to, um, you know, treat myself I hate to say this was relatively recently, um, with this size, which I, I really like. The other one I, I've got and I use occasionally, I'm not going to try and get it out because it's stuck to all sorts of stuff. That Oh, hang on, hang on, maybe I can. They do suction to each other a bit. Nobody comes to any harm. See, this is why you don't need to worry. Look at the colour of this boy. Um, this one I use, really, I only use this one for enormous leaves, for big leaves. Um, and it's the biggest one I've got. I think they do a bigger one now, you know, and I'm sort of tempted. I am sort of tempted. I can't deny it because I could do even bigger leaves. But, you know, there's a limit. These fit so nicely in this box. That's really what's puts me off. A bigger one. And I think, nah, it wouldn't go in my box. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. That does a pretty big horse chestnut leaf for me. So I'm fairly happy with that. So I would choose a size depending on how large you like to work. You know, if you're somebody that likes to work large scale, I would think about the 8 by 10 or even the 12 by um, 12 by 10. If you're um, a sort of middle for diddle, I would think of the 6 by 6 or the 7 by 5, depending on the orientation. You know, do you like squares or do you like rectangles better? Um, and if you like working mini, try the five by three. I think you will almost certainly end up buying more than one jelly plate because um, some of the techniques we look at later work best if we allow stuff to actually sit on a jelly plate for a while. Um, and also, once you get addicted, you want the different sizes. I don't have circular ones um, and I haven't got the um, hexagonal um, or any of those ones. Um, for me, I would use masks to make those shapes. Um, I just think, you know, there has to be a limit um, to how many jelly plates I want to buy. And I do have quite a lot. Um, but, you know, if that's a shape that you particularly like, I'm not, I, I like circles. I do like circles, but I don't, you know, when I, I did have a circular plate and I ended up cutting off the edges to make it a square. Uh, that's when I discovered you could chop them up with decal edge scissors um, because I wasn't using it because I really don't particularly um, print in circles. Um, but that's down to you. You know best what you like. So that's the jelly plates and that is the, you definitely need one of these. Now I say one of these, you can of course, whoops, get in. As I'm constantly reminded by somebody when I'm teaching, you can make jelly plates. And the whole concept of this came from somebody who at some point made, I love the idea of a woman making jelly for tea, for the kids, whatever, in a tray and suddenly just thinking, you know what, bugger dinner, I'm going to put some paint on that and paint with it. I, yeah, I like that woman, good thinking. So that's how it was born and when I was first introduced to gelatin printing, it was from... Um, I believe she's an American artist called Raina Gilman and she wrote a fabulous book on making, um, on printing fabrics using gelatin, so making a gelatin plate. Now the problem with that for me, what, well there's two. One, I wreck them really quickly. You've seen, you've seen how careful I'm not. Um, and I just, it doesn't matter how it's been made and how strong it is, I will trash um, a homemade gelatin plate. I've proved that over and over and over. And the second one is, I tend to do things on a whim, so I might be, for instance, oh, I don't know, I might be stenciling something and I might think, actually, I'd like to get the jelly plate out and get some reverses here or some softer images, and I don't want to have to go and make a jelly. Um, at that point. Now I know some people have to store them in the fridges and things but for me it really suits me to have them available and ready. I have a lovely woman at a show once who stood near my stand when I was demonstrating the jelly plate 
and um, I spent, I would say, not far short of an hour telling me that I didn't need a jelly plate and that it was a waste of money and da 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 da, da. Um, you know, because I could make my own. And um, you can, you, def you definitely can, I don't think they're as good. So we'll sign off on that one there, hey? Right, next on the list, very important, you need some paints. We're going to use acrylic paints, can't harm the plate with those. Now, I am going to use acrylic fabric paints because I print both paper and fabric and I use both paper and fabric in my um, mixed media work. I would, sorry, I should have introduced myself. I'm so hopeless at getting things in the right order. Hi, I'm Hilary. Um, Hilary Beattie, I'm from Wales in the United Kingdom. And I would say now I'm probably a mixed media artist. Um, I started off with very traditional patchwork and quilting. And in fact, I started off with traditional embroidery, then patchwork and quilting, then went down the city and guilds route, got rude, city and guilds route, and got very interested in design. Um, moved into more contemporary um, textiles then I would say from contemporary into art textiles and then I gradually moved into using more and more paper in my work but I, I often stitch it so I still think of myself as a textile artist but probably mixed media covers it better I don't think it really matters too much as far as I'm concerned I'm an artist um, so because I print on both paper and fabric, I use fabric paints all the time. Um, I could use plain acrylics on paper and fabric paints on fabric. But for me, that would mean having two sets of paint. Now, I um, have got, I make my own colours, um, I mix them to sell, and I've got nearly 60 different colours of paint. Um, and I don't want that doubled. So I don't want 60 colours in um, plain acrylic and 60 colours in um, fabric paint. It's too many paints to store. 60 and plus I've got another whole range of shimmering paints, which is another near 40. That's enough paints for me to have around. Plus, if I go from what will quite often happen is I'll be printing away on paper and I think this is lovely, this is great, really liking this. Hey, this would make some great fabric for such and such. I'll grab my fabric, I want to be able to print. I don't want to change paints, that would be wasteful and neither do I want to try and match that colour. So for me, over the years I have, as I finished up my acrylic paints, I just haven't replaced them, I've stuck with the fabric paints. If you only have acrylic paints, you could use a fabric or textile medium. Um, the, I think, um, Golden Do One, GAC 900, GAC 900. It's great, but it's very liquid. Um, so when you add it, I find it makes your paints more watery. Um, a better one, I think, is the um, System 3 textile medium. And that will basically um, make your acrylic paints washable on fabric. So you could add that, you could add that into your acrylics if you want to. Um, we'll talk more as we go on about why I use the paints I do um, and hopefully it will become obvious as we go on. So you need them to be acrylic and you just need a range of colours you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, whatever you like. I'm trying to find two balls the same size. I'm struggling. There we are. Got blood orange and cornflower blue. Nice combination of colours. Um, we're using acrylic because it's strong because it works well on the plate, because it's easy clean up for us, because it's very, very safe, it's safe with kids. Um, and this has a nice, you can hear, it's not fully liquid, you'll see when I put it out, but it's got a nice consistency for the plate. It's not too thick, it's not too slicky, but neither is it too liquid. Um, in terms of acrylic paints, um, the ones that I have liked in the past have been System 3, um, but there's loads online. So, you know, feel free to, sh to, to share information in the group um, about your, about your favourites. Um, I've seen lots of artists use golden um, fluids on their jelly plate, and I'm sure they would look absolutely beautiful. Very expensive, but absolutely beautiful. All depends what we're going for, doesn't it? Um, so my advice would be use what you've got to begin with, see how it performs. And my guess is you probably don't know a lot about the paint that you're using. If you're anything like most of my students, you don't. 
um, and we will be the first session I'm going to do after well I'm going to do this session well this is really an introduction and the materials we're going to use then I'm going to do um, just a quick video showing you some of the things made with jelly prints and then I am going to do a video on um, the difference between paint and dye and the difference between the paint and transparent just because it's important for you to know those as we go forward and I watch so um, well no I don't watch so many but I do see a lot I can't get the word a lot so many whenever I watch um, somebody printing and they don't mention whether the product they are using is opaque or transparent I feel a frustration because the results you get are, are very dependent on on that um, uh, not capacity property on that property of your paint or dye so um, we will talk about that in the first video I'm going to do for you so we want acrylic paint now mine is opaque and what I do is I use this acrylic um, a matte medium to basically make it more transparent um, and we'll talk about that in the video um, it'll be the third video so you'll get an introduction some pieces made with jelly prints and then the first video before we get jelly ping will be about pasty and transparency so i'll show you that but basically i'm just going to use some of my opaque paint mix it with acrylic medium and that will give me a transparent paint to use and again it saves me having extra paints um so we've got our paints right a rubber brayer you don't need to really worry too much what size I absolutely adore my little two incher. I just think it's so cute. Three inches is a nice size. Four inches would be fine. It doesn't have to be the size of your plate. It can be bigger. These are just fairly cheap and cheerful ones. I don't even know who they buy. I think that's an SD one. Um, <laughs> that's what tends to happen to mine. I must admit is they get covered in acrylic and eventually, again, I'll give that a good soak and peel it all off. Um, but you need a rubber brayer. Now we are only gonna use this um, for very specific um, techniques because I don't apply my paint to the plate with a rubber brayer. I know most videos do, I don't. I've always used a sponge roller. Um, and my logic for that is that if you use a rubber brayer, you're going to get too much paint on the plate and you are going to lose um, the plate's ability to give you that really fine detail. What you want is really thin, fine coats. Um, that is what will give you the most texture from a jelly plate. Otherwise, in my view, you might as well just monoprint on a glass sheet or a plastic sheet. If you're gonna slather on the paint, you are wasting the qualities of the jelly plate. That's just my view. You will discover I am fairly outspoken about my views, but you're free to disagree with me. I don't mind at all, but um, I feel it's useful from a point of view of a reasonable amount of experience to tell you what I think. So I would get yourself a sponge roller. This is a decorator's roller. Um, handle and top. I use these all the time and for just about everything. I use them for stenciling fabric and paper. I use them with prints. Um, I think the only thing I don't use them, I use them for um, printing Thermofax screens because it stops me um, trashing them. Um, I think the only thing I don't use them with is screens because I have yet to discover how to get paint really effectively through a screen with a sponge roller. Um, but I would indulge yourself in one or two of those. They're just brilliant. Um, you're gonna need a paint tray or a paint palette or something similar. So, something like that. I really like using these. So this is just a plastic um, a paint tray. I use these 90% oh, of the time, I would say. But I do also enjoy using a tear-off palette because, like I've done here, I can, um, I can key the waste and use it in collage. Um, and I do have quite a lot of sheets of this in my collage stash. Um, we can also do some really interesting, as an aside, monoprinting techniques on this sort of thing. Um, and as we go through the year, I know it's not strictly jelly, print, jelly, print, jelly plate printing, but I think it's all monoprinting. We could sneak it in because you can get some really um, interesting results. Some of the images I put up online um, were really grungy. Now, some of those were from the jelly plate. 
and some of them are from um printed on this thing so we'll look at that later in the year when we've got a bit more familiar with things um i used to use when we lived in lincoln the local chinese did um their fried rice had really good lids they were completely flat and i always used to use those as paint trays to be honest so just anything you've got you know you don't you don't need to go out and spend you don't need to go out and spend money um i've seen people use freezer paper as palettes as a paint palette that would work fine i mean i would just lose it but um it certainly would work paper okay we are going to certainly for the first month or two use paper mostly paper um if not all paper just because it limits the amount of things you need to learn at once um apologies to those of you that are very familiar already um with working with paint and dye on fabric which is how you know uh, which is how i would is how i work on fabric um but there are good reasons for this you will get the best prints on paper so if you're new it's the best substrate to start with the reason for that is very simple paper has a sort of surface tension a surface on it which means that when you put paint on it sits on the top of the paper it doesn't go through to the other side if you put liquid medium on it it can go through but paint will sit on the top of the paper um, on fabric paint is absorbed into the fibers you know it will sit on the top more than say a liquid dye but it will to some degree get absorbed into the fibers which will reduce um how much paint is left in your print because some of it goes into the softness of the fabric so you will get crisper better prints on paper so i suggest very strongly that you start on paper it also means you don't have to worry about fixing or anything like that um or whether you've got fabric paints you can just use acrylic paint on paper while we get going and while you get the feel of what the plate can do um and for those of you that are paper artists um you don't need to worry you can just use any papers you want you can use cartridge paper watercolor paper whatever you fancy cardi paper i've got um i mean i do stitch this is layout paper no that isn't layout paper that is actually um a copy of paper oh, i have got some layout paper here and actually there's layout and deli here these two papers i use most of the time when i'm printing um this is deli paper um those of you in america will be very familiar with this here in the UK, um, our own greaseproof paper won't take um, a wet media like dye. Um, this deli paper, I get mine from America, does. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, so this and layout paper here, which is, um, it's, it's a finer paper. I think it's about 45 grams weight. Um, and it also takes, um, it's very, very strong. Um, and both of these I stitch so an awful lot of my current work is actually um, made with paper not with fabrics and really when it's stitched you can't tell I mean I always mount my work on either in frames or on canvas um, so there's no issue of you can tell because it's not floppy I don't make that kind of textile work well at the moment I don't I have done and I may again in the future but at the moment where I'm at is mounted on canvas probably and so it's not going to make any difference and actually this paper particularly the layout paper um, is very very strong um, it's really lightweight so I can collage up in layers with it beautifully um, I do it onto a felt substrate um, and it's beautiful to stitch it's really really smooth you know I'll talk more about that as we go through in fact I'll talk more about that when I'm showing you some samples in the next video so I've got layout paper, I'll put them back in the drawer, I've got layout paper and I've got um, deli paper in various sizes. Those are the two I will probably use the most. Other options, oh no, and the other one that I'll use a lot is copier paper. Now if I know my paper is going to be for collage and not, but not stitched collage, copier paper is brilliant. It's cheap, 
It's the cheapest, probably, apart from repurposed paper. Um, and it's relatively strong and it's beautiful for collage. It doesn't, you can stitch it, and I have done in the past before I discovered these two papers. I've stitched into um, copier paper. But um, the others are better for stitching into. But if I'm just going to make collages, um, which I, or books or something like that, I will use copier paper because it's nice, cheap, easy and available. And really any copier paper, whatever is the best the best offer what else, what else have i got here packaging paper you know this is some that's come wrapped around something or in something at some point and i've got a drawer full of these papers that's actually quite a nice thick one i think we could actually make running plates with that um and amazon you know that uh, the amazon brown packaging paper that's fantastic for printing on really really good and i love to repurpose papers probably more for me just from the kind of point of view that i hate the waste i hate seeing it all wasted but i know it gets recycled but i think better than recycling is just reuse it and make something beautiful out of it so hang on to your packaging um i've also got black paper which can be really fun to print in either white or metallics on black paper that's actually black card i think um but i have got black paper somewhere in my world reusing old paper i mean this for example is um an exhibition that my students had in may this year and it produced a whole load of papers you know i had to do hanging plans for everybody i did um i did lists of work and where they were going to hang and how much they work for everybody you know so there was there was loads and loads of this and this is just going to be wasted now because i've finished except that it isn't because i will print on it and use it in collage so i just have a drawer that i keep i mean this needs its staples taking out but i have a drawer that i keep all this kind of paper in um, and I then use it when I can either for printing or for painting on. I mean, I keep junk mail as well and I use that. Um, maybe not so much for jelly printing because jelly printing is quite light. Um, but, you know, I will just use whatever there is. I would always prefer to recycle and reuse if I can. Other things that are nice to print, and I've got some small, just small off cuts of, um, I think this is probably cartridge paper from where I've been doing something, probably making books. So I hang on to these because bits like this can be really interesting to print with the jelly plate, you know, some smaller bits, because then we can put various size bits down on the plate at the same time or take bits off. So those can be really nice. So I actually quite often cut myself a selection of papers in smaller sizes so that I can be dobbing them on and off the plate as I'm playing. Um, also cards, um, these are greetings cards. Um, I use these to make zigzag books. Um, so this is one of my favourite sizes actually. This is an 8x8 card which makes a really nice size of zigzag book. You know we just take that together and we'll probably make one of that because one of the things I would like to do with you is to go through ideas of things that we can do with the prints because you do produce a lot of prints with the jelly plate because what happens is once you get going it's fast and your brain just goes oh I could do that you do that oh well I could do that and then you do that and then you go, oh yeah but I could do that and you do that and you will end up with piles and piles of beautiful prints and it's nice to have some things to do with it. Um, so we will be making some books and things during the course of the year um, and some textiles so that we've got some ideas of things to do with them so greetings cards or to give people you know you could you know if you're cleaner than me i'd get it all over the place but you know you could be printing onto your plate with a card and making beautiful cards i'd probably do it on deli paper which is slightly transparent and then collage it onto the card um, but i've got various that's smaller cards isn't it i've got various sizes and, and types of cards here this is a this is actually that's not that's watercolor paper again i think i've been making books um probably with the sketchbook group um and cut that off so i've kept those i've got envelopes because i make zigzag books out of my um cards i end up with masses and masses of envelopes but i can i can either print oh, i can either print those as they are and you can make very interesting sketchbooks and zigzag books with envelopes or as i've just failed to do there but you know i could get a knife and do this properly and open these up and what shape is this when it's opened up i need to find out now and of course i'm not going to get it oh, stupid open. i need to see not doing a very successful job of opening this up am i well never mind never mind doesn't matter it doesn't matter 
I'd be very happy. See, what I would do is I would cut that piece off and that piece off. Then I've got two really odd bits and that one and that one. Then I've got four odd bits and a nice bit in the middle. But it's just I've got masses of envelopes. So I think let's use them. Let's print them. That's a nice craft card in brown card. That would be nice to print and loads more envelopes. Also, repurposing, I have, and I'm sure you do too, certainly if you do paper arts, you will have just masses of stuff that you have accumulated thinking, ooh, that would be useful. Um, this, um, because of how I work, I often print off images to teach, or for design, or for, you know, a million and one things, and I often have them left over at the end. I print more than I need. I mean, I don't know why I've got two of these, um i can see the print is very slightly different in color um but i keep all of these some i might collage as they are but a lot i just think oh well, i'll use these and print over the top of them and it'll just make interest in the background uh, that looks like a page out of um i don't know whether that's part of a map or whether it's a page out of a book that was a map but it's a bit of a map bits of books that's a nice bit of music see the three little pigs how can you fail to like a piece of paper like that this was a fabulous thing. This was a lecture set catalogue from back in the day. This was when I used to work at the Yorkshire Regional Health Authority um, in my early 20s. And we had this catalogue um, for choosing, I presume, um, I don't even know why we had it. What did we buy? It was something the architects buy. Anyway, I had a catalogue. I don't know what you used to buy, stencils or something. But anyway, it's fantastic. Loads of taste. Brilliant for stamping on. Some music. Oh, Oh, that's a bit of a nice picture. I'll be having that out. I think that's rather lovely, isn't it? Now that is a picture, and that's reminding me, I've left my laser prints downstairs. I'll go and get it in a minute. Um, that's a picture that might work as a really nice picture to transfer. We'll be looking at that later in the year. Um, again, once we've got used to the plate, but it's a really nice black and white image. I've not noticed that in there. I just like it. It's rather, um, I don't know, it's just got a certain kind of, um, like a, quite a naive look to it. I like it. Oh, and another. <gasps> plunder, plunder, plunder. Right, well, we'll get these out and see what we can do with them, hey? Is there just two? Any more for any more? I mean, there's guitars. I'm not so interested in those. Do I pull them out now? I probably should, shouldn't I? Because I'll forget they're in here. Oh, and that's nice. Poor Howard, dead and gone, I think it says. Right, okay, let's put those out. Keep those to one. Oh, and look, there's one of the two cowboys on... Uh, that might be repeated. Yeah, but I'm going to get them onto my laser printer, aren't I? We'll talk about that in a minute. Nice if I could show you. If Stephen, you'll hear about Stephen. Stephen is my husband. Um, Milo and Dylan are my dogs. They are almost bound to appear in these videos at some point. Um, but if Stephen comes past, I will ask him to go and get the print that I sent down to the basement. Um, but these are kind of got distracted and sidelined there. But the that's a nice one, guitar on a chair. Any photos, we'll go through this, but we can't contrast which those have. So these are just papers to print on, to repurpose, out of old books. I think this might be out of Inquire Within, which is a fascinating thing if you can manage to find it second. Well, you will find it second hand. There's loads of them around. But it's just a brilliant book, which has things like, why does hot water crack a thick tumbler? Very interesting. Quite, hang on, that's the boys. Boys, boys, Steve, thank you. This just happens sometimes. When I was recording for um, Immediate Live doing um, a colour master class, we had to stop every time that happened. I can't tell you, I can't tell you how annoying that was because it happens quite a lot. Stevie, are you there now? Could you nip down to the basement at some point in the next 10 minutes and grab, I think there should be a laser print down there. Yeah. He's a good egg, is Stephen. He's, he's a very good egg. If you get to know Stephen, you'll know he's a good egg. So the, anyway, so yes, this Inquire Within, it's like this old um, encyclopedic manual thing, but what's great is there's no index. It's not in any particular order. So you just get questions like, why does hot water crack a thick tumbler? Or indeed, what is the origin of the term psychophant? Or how do we get our tea? What is a writer's inkhorn? Who was Anubis? You know, all this kind of fascinating stuff. 
but just random so i don't you would just have to read the book for interest you know you couldn't look it up because there was no way to anyway i got an old copy of that and i pull that to pieces for printing on bits from that's an old nature diary of some sort all sorts gardening books you know go to the go to the second hand shop and you'll get masses um that is actually rather a gorgeous piece of old ledger um i don't know where i've got that from no idea where i've got that from but it's nice isn't it um more lecture set etc etc bits bits never waste a scrap bit more of that map i think photocopies the unchanging traditions of christmas in poland i don't know why i've got that all sorts of stuff so anything anything you can repurpose these are going to make very interesting um these are going to make very interesting backgrounds to print on is that one yay fantastic brilliant okay so we'll look at that with that in a minute right so papers so enjoy yourself enjoy yourself plundering for found papers we don't get one but if you get newspapers they're lovely to print on they've got some text in the background anything that's just going to make life i think a bit more interesting and just add the unexpected behind your prints okay so oops 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 right so that was papers i'm getting there i'm getting there oh i haven't mentioned wet strength tissue because i don't know where mine is i use deli paper most of the time but wet strength tissue is also um a nice alternative and lovely to put onto your jelly plate textured items now these can be anything really um i will show you them this is we're going to do texture in our first videos because it's a really nice easy way of getting prints off the plate and they can be anything you want. I'm just trying to see because I've got two piles of them and I know I have. I just don't know where they are. Right. OK, I've seen the other one. So anything, you know, that's an old, as you can see, quivering whisk. You're all going to want my treasures. This is where you want other people's treasures. Um, I love um, I don't teach um, um, alive, you know, as in a real person. <laughs> I am a real person. You know what I mean. In a physical, in a physical environment, um, that much anymore. But things like this would always call arguments about who who's got the whisk, who's got the whisk. This is one of my favourites. This is actually quite a tough tube. I am slowly but surely breaking it down. Um, so I'm, I can't remember what that was inside. Not your common garden. Um, it's I don't think it's one out of my normal cheap um, paper that I have for wiping up with. But a nice tube. Very fond of it little egg cup similar similar to the whisk but different um the middle of I, I can't often get the middle of my tapes because the boys like them the dogs they they tend to disappear oh we've got dylan with us now he's got a chew and i say that dylan is in bed down there with a chew good boy a carrot which is his toy and a roll of masking tape um so i rest my case really um i find it very hard to get hold of those but they make great marks um oh that's got pills in <laughs> i don't think i'm meant to do that i think that was meant to let's have a look at the expiry date expires 12 22 but not even out of date i'll keep those that's ibuprofen very handy i think my guess is i have them on the table because i was having i don't know period pains or something and then i've picked them up and printed with them but anyway i do like pill blister packs preferably not full um for printing with they make great marks other little things you know bottle lids loads of different bottle lids that's one off my um i think my mouthwash or it could be the toothpaste paint pot lids another little lid that's a very precious lid because it's a little um cube i've got some um wooden spoons and things i've got loads more and i will show them all to you i'm just showing you some faves this was a nice piece of packaging this has been dipped in soy wax as well um for um batik type printing but it still prints beautifully with jelly plate that's one of my favorites um is a, is a c is an old cd cd do i mean a cd or do i mean a dvd i don't know what i mean but anyway an old one of those ah you see the proofs in the pudding here look ibuprofen with no ibuprofen in them and very well used and this one i've actually mounted the blister packs onto a piece of um just foam board which just makes it easier to use an old bit of um 
uh, garden fencing, really nice, all sorts of things we can use for texture. So we're going to have a really nice first month playing with texture. Um, it's a great way of getting into your jelly plate without any strict rules about anything at all um, and getting some fabulous results. So textured items, masking tape. Yeah, lovely. I've got that. Luckily, Dylan, I have other rolls. I buy lots of masking tape because the dogs, not Milo so much, but Dylan loves it. Different widths, if you can get them. If you can't, don't worry too much because we can always um, either cut or tear different widths off a wider roll. So don't worry too much about your sizes, but I have got... <laughs> I got them as Christmas present one one year. I mean, these are the kind of things that delight you if you are um, a creative person. I got this set, look. Um, there was that size, that size, that size, two of that size, lots of this little size, and then a huge one at the bottom. So I've got this huge, great range of sizes, um, which just saves me a lot of cutting. But basically, just some masking tape. I mean, it's something I would have in my art kit every single time is masking tape. I use it for loads of things. Um, some scissors. Good old scissors. And I would suggest also, um, for cutting out things later on, scissors we will need anyway, but most of you will have this anyway. Some sort of cutting mat. It's a little A4 one, that would be fine. And, so, and a cutting knife. Now I like a knife, this is a Stanley one, not expensive at all, but it's snap off blades, um, which um, I have a little container somewhere in my life that I put the blades into, it could be on my I need it tray, there it is on my I need it tray. Things don't stay this organized. Um, and this, it just means as soon as it gets a bit blunt, I can snap off the blade, get rid of it, and I've got a new blade on it. Um, and on this one, You've got the end comes off to hold the blade while you snap it. So you don't have to take your life in your hand with a pair of pliers. Definitely recommend those. Um, See, so I would suggest if you've got them, look out your cut. I mean, I think most of you will have these things out and about anyway. Um, stencils. Okay, these aren't essential, but again, I suspect most of you will have some. Um, if you haven't, we can make some very simple ones when we do this session. I mean, these are homemade ones um, that I made for um, a class I was teaching. Couldn't be simpler, really, these, could they? This is um, a tree. Another tree. Another tree. I know, my drawing's awesome. I know, I know. And that tree in a different size, that tree in a different size, and my guess is that tree in a different size. And then I have got middles for them, um, but those probably wouldn't make it to the jelly plate. Those would be great on the jelly plate. They'd be really good fun to play with. And we can, as I say, I can do a quick video if you show me how to just cut a very simple stencil. Um, but probably a lot of you will already have some stencils. Um, I have a huge collection of stencils. I use them for years and they're one of my kind of go-to things for patterning things. So just any patterns that appeal to you really. I mean, I love I love using quite simple patterns on the jelly plate. So spots, circles, um, sunbursts, grids, that sort of thing. But anyth anything you want really, anything you like um, is great for playing on the jelly plate. Um, wooden print blocks. Um, if you've got these, these are great um, because they're hard, you know, they're a very hard surface and the hard surfaces push into the jelly plate really nicely. Um, so anything you've got, I mean, I just picked up these ones of mine because they happen to be clean. That's the only reason I chose these ones. Well, I chose that one because that's one of my dogs and it's rather gorgeous. Um, but, you know, any, anything you like, I've got spiny fish, a really nice cow parsley, I've got a lovely aster head, you might have patterns, whatever you've got, these are fantastic for working on um, the jelly plate. If you haven't got wooden blocks but have got hard rubber stamps, those will work really well too. I don't have those, I'm kind of wooden block girl for my, for my um, prints. But we can also make our own. Um, so if and remember, you know, I will go back through all of this when we're at the relevant weeks. So these are, um, this is soft cut lino in a lovely sort of a slab. Um, 
and these are positive and negative um, lino cuts from that. I mean, this is a really simple lino cut. You can tell I don't clean things very well. I clean them enough so that they work, but I, I don't feel any need to have them cleaned so that they look pretty. Um, and that's another lino cut of kind of, that's beautiful on the jelly plate. I've had some really nice prints from that one. Um, these are just made from these sort of blocks of lino. Um, you can get them in various sizes with the wooden backs is particularly useful it makes them very easy to print but they don't have to have you can have one like this you could even have um soft cut like this that's just plain and push it on like that um this uh, master cut blocks are quite nice they're not I, and they are, thick, are they the same thickness as this i think they probably are they're the same thickness as this pink stuff i think this pink stuff might be speedball this is master cut from SD. These are um, now obsolete from SD, but I do have some in my shop. If anybody was interested in um, the wooden blocks, um, back, I bought up all their stock when they stopped stocking them because I like them so much. So I do have some of those. Um, but you could also use things like um, erasers, these small um, classic erasers. Um, Steedler were the ones that um, were the first ones around, but there's loads of them now. And these are really brilliant for making um, little stencils. This was one I made last Christmas, anybody that did the weekly stream. So that's a little, I mean, you can't see it, but it's berries. And that says Christmas. Um, well, it says Xmas, actually, because I couldn't fit Christmas on. A little line of, um, of um, leaves, simple patterns like that words they're great for having words on you can get a slightly uh, that's a nice one it looks a bit peculiar there but it's a little pot that looks really nice printed out that's one of my favorite ones which is just some um some x's but it looks like cross stitch i love it um you can get this size um they're called something like fat belly fish or something when we do this session i'll tell you about them um, but that gives you a slightly bigger surface to carve into. But they're also erasers. And you can get these little circular discs. You know, I've got one carved with a tree there. I don't know what that one's carved with, but some sort of pattern. I've got a beautiful one with a spiral. Some, I've got several with trees. I like trees. Obviously, I like trees because I've carved them a lot. Um, but you can... That's a nice one with a spiral. That's a little circular one with a pear. Um, they come looking like that so there's lots of options for that and we'll talk more about those when we do that week and I will put you in a um, that's a little piece of rubber left from the weekend when I was um, away teaching um, and was carving rubbers to um, just the small motifs from um, vintage quilts to start building up designs so really useful things and I will show you how to make those um, and also foam stamps you know these are they're not as um, they don't give as good a, an impression but they're still really useful and we can print direct onto a jelly plate as well we'll come to that so these are ones just made out of um, it's called funky foam um, I use a self-adhesive one. It's usually in the kids' department. Um, that one is just um, nice, nice random grid. That one's just some cut circles. And that's just, I spec the bits left when I'd cut the circles out. This one's mounted on an off-cut of MDF from, um, if you ask in B&Q, they'll often give them to you. Or um this one is mounted on just foam board it's five milli foam board and it means i you know i've mounted on both sides they're really nice too anything else that we're going to use to make i don't think so right oh yes leaves and flowers and nature items i'm just thinking of things we're going to make texture and stuff <laughs> there's always a bit of thread isn't there there's always a bit of thread when you're a stitcher always 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 even though i use mostly paper these days there's also still always a bit of thread okay now these are leaves um and various other nature items that i've preserved in gelatin um, not gelatin that's what we're printing on that i've preserved in glycerin if you want to know how to do that if you go onto my youtube channel which you'll find really easily just go to youtube and google my name um 
I have done a video on how to do that because I get asked so often. So I've got leaves and this means I can print out of season. Um, I'm not sure when we will be doing nature, but you can bet your bottom dollar it's probably going to be a time when there isn't what I want in the garden. So if I preserve, see, look at the shape of that fern. It's so weird. It's just so weird, isn't it? It's going to make beautiful prints. Um, and this preserves them more or less indefinitely, really. I, I haven't had any um, sort of disappear on me. Um, what a shape. That's um, that's a mature eucalyptus leaf. It's fantastic, fantastic isn't it? Um, mermaid's purses. I've got that right. I have a tendency to call those seahorses. It's just because the sea is in my mind, but we can print with those. Using glycerin means something like this. This is the seed head of a mahonia. If I put this on here, you can see a bit better because it's on white. This is the seed head from a Mahonia and when it was fresh this was really prickly and I wouldn't have wanted to put it on my plate because it could have damaged it. But in this state it's softened by the glycerin um, and I don't think I've printed with that so it'd be interesting to see what that does. Um, I've got seaweed. You can preserve seaweed and glycerin and again it just keeps it soft and flexible. Um, so if you're interested in preserving them, have a watch of that YouTube video. You'll just find it there. Um, it's not really long. It's about half an hour, I think. Um, but we can also use fresh. You know, I can remember before I knew how to preserve them in glycerin, uh, you know, hunting around outside out of season for anything, um, you know, coming back with just ivy leaves and weed grasses. But we can still get something. Other stuff, right, other things we are going to use. These are the ones that we're going to use just for specific techniques. These are China Graph um, pencils. It doesn't really matter what colour. You can tell which I use the most, which is my black. I think that's probably just because I can see it more easily. Um, so just get yourself one of those. I would, I mean, these actually aren't very expensive at all. Um, and you may well have them. If you haven't, um, you might want to just watch the video um, later in the year. These, This will be a later technique, as will the crayons and things like that. Um, you know, we will do the kind of, um, not the basic, but the easier to get at stuff first. And then we'll go on to the, because these techniques can be a bit hit and miss as well. Um, so you need to have realised that um, you can jelly print. It's just these can be hit and miss. So China graph and also wax crayons. Now I've got Neo Colour 1 because that's what I use. Not Neo Colour 2, you don't want water soluble crayons. Um, you don't want oil crayons, you want wax crayons. So um, I've got Neo Colour 1, but Crayola would be fine. Um, just a good waxy crayon of any sort. I'm going to stick those in there so I don't lose them. Tyvek, let me show you Tyvek. We are not using Tyvek to melt. If you've done that, these are things that I use for making masks. Um, sort of a separate session to stencils, although they are really the reverse of each other. Um, I just, I kind of think of them in different ways. Um, I make masks, I, did, I think I put out some masks to show you. Here, here's some masks. So these are just some I've used recently. So that, I know doesn't look very likely, but that is a starfish, okay? That was in a Matisse session. That is a wonky starfish. That is made from Tyvek, and Tyvek is brilliant for this because it's very, very strong. It's strong, and it's easy to get off the plate, and it lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. And bizarrely, you can wash it if you want to wash the paint off. I mean, I don't, but you can. You can wash it. So if you've been using it with dyes, for instance, you can wash the dye off. The paint won't come back off again. Let me find you one that's got paint on. Um, that's a little pot with paint on. Um, the paint won't come back off this again once it's dry. Acrylic, once it's dried and sealed, stays there. But if this was dye on here, it would come back off the next time I wet the mask. So I would wash them if they've got dye on. Tyvek comes in sheets. Um, I get mine um, in these. And I'm using a 55 gram Tyvek. Um, www. I'll put all this information up, jillian.co.uk, that's where I get mine from. Um, 55 grams, it's not that expensive, and it's brilliant for this, it's brilliant for screen printing um, masks as well, if you're interested in stuff like that. Um, and if you like melting things, it does melt. I can tell you that because I've tried to iron my mask flat stupidly and watched it shrill. 
Um, so that's Tyvek, but you don't have, if you haven't got Tyvek, you certainly don't have to use Tyvek. Um, you can use lots of other things um, for masks. Um, wallpaper is great. I've got um, a roll of old wallpaper, just one with a coating on rather than other. You can just use the lining paper. Um, I find the one with a coating a bit more durable because it doesn't get as wet. Um, you could use just plain paper. This is just some cartridge paper. That will work fine as a mask. And this is actually um, stencil acetate um, that I've cut out and used on the pla uh, as a mask. And it worked really nicely. And what I love is it's got covered in paint. I think that's really pretty. I've got a few of those. Where's the other ones? She says, just needing to show you my... You see, look, I've got another pot. This, this again, is a stencil acetate. So really what you want is... Some people like to use freezer paper. I find it's too femme for me. It kind of collapses around a bit. Um, but I've got loads of masks made with just cartridge paper and um, wallpaper. They just won't last forever. These Tyvek ones do seem to last a long time. But again, see if you like working with masks first. This stuff here, you could use this. This is kind of crafts card stock, isn't it? Um, and I don't quite know where I got this from, actually. I suspect somebody gave it to me. Um, and it's not something I would use as is. Um, it looks as though I might have used it as to, to go underneath something, to protect something at some point, and then spray dye around. Um, but this is, you could use this and cut it out and use it as mask. It's a little bit thick, but all that will mean, you'll see what it means. You get the kind of line around the edge. But these are great for making rubbing plates, which we will be making again later in the year and using on the plate. Um, so for those, um, I this is the back of, um, I think it's my tracing paper um, book, which is a really nice, thick, um, great grey board. Um, awesome just off cuts of mount board. Or if you have sore hands, and I know a lot of us do as we get older, a bit arthritic -y, something like this will work fine and you can just cut with scissors. So that's cards, Tyvek, that sort of stuff. Let me have a look. I've written it all down. Well, this is your list, actually, because I know I'll forget otherwise. Um, right, let's just talk about protein dye very quickly, because I'll talk more about this when we use it. Um, but I will be using protein dye. I use this on paper and fabric. I basically use it as the same as a drawing ink or a watercolour on paper. And then I, it's the same as using fabric paint on both fabric and paper. It just means I only have to have one product and one set of colours. Um, so I mix my dye, I'll show you how, with water, um, and it lasts what it certainly lasts a year i've heard people say you know it's going to go off in a in a day it just doesn't seem to for me you know so certainly for what we're doing it's fine i will show you how to do that so you need some procyon dye powder this is procyon mx and it's for natural fibers so you don't want acid dye um that's the that's the only other one that you're likely to find around things like dylon cold water that's a that's a that's a procyon dye you could use that if you wanted to you'll need if you want to work on fabric you're going to need soda ash to fix it this is soda ash it's just basically a powder um, which is the activator for the procyon dye so it is what activates this dye um, to form a chemical bond i'm no chemist but it forms then the chemical bond with the fabric and becomes washable um, and we'll talk more about those um, when we when we come to using them you can use obviously if you're going to want if you're going to if you're wanting to print on fabric you need some fabric go for a natural fiber i've just got plain cotton here um mine is wrinkly like this because it has been pre-soaked in a soda solution which is how i get the soda ash um into the mix with my procyon dye without mixing it into the procyon and we will talk more about that when we're using them just know that if you want to work with fabric those are the things that you're going to need so that's the protein dyes. Um, I've got a soft line. Honestly, I mean soft lino. I mean soft lino. Can you please change soft line and or plastic erasers to soft lino and or plastic erasers? Um, so the other thing is the other things like magazines. Okay. I'm sure you've probably heard of doing magazine transfers on the jelly plate. They're great fun. The better the quality of the magazine, 
the better the chance you've got of it working. Um, it is hit and miss. I'm not going to say it isn't. Oh, it's another thing we're going to play with later in the year. Um, you are going to want photos with high contrast in the photo. Um, a lot of people seem to use fashion magazines. and Maybe that is because the... Um, maybe they have them. Maybe they just have them. I mean, it's a thing I have, <laughs> going to be honest, never bought. Um, so I don't have them. What I have is loads of home magazines. This is a lovely one, The World of Interiors. Um, so I would just hunt through this for images that might work for me that um, have got lots of contrast in them. Harder, perhaps, I don't know. You probably see, I've got a woman. I've got a woman with contrast there. You see, I'd probably rather have a llama, to be honest, than a fashion model myself. Um, so mine are, you know, I've got homes and gardens. This has nice, this has nice pages, nice quality. Um, really it's hit and miss which work and which don't and sometimes you can use a magazine one time and then you get it a six months later and they maybe change the ink or the paper which people are frequently doing and it won't print but you know hey we can we can suck that up and see that'll be fine so we will be doing that later so hang on to your magazines and if you do um, get things like i don't know vogue l whatever um you know i know that a lot of people use those and then we will be using, this is a laser print. Um, I have a laser printer, only black and white, downstairs. Um, and actually that's fine because the black and white gives me the contrast. These, on a home machine, I find are not as successful as having them done um, via a printer. And my guess is it's just probably the cost. I guess my toner isn't as strong. Whatever it is, this will print and I will get a print from this and it'll be lovely. But I would get a better print if I had this image done for me um, at a commercial laser printers. And there is one online where you can get something like 10 different images done for a reasonable, a reasonable amount of money. And I, when we come to doing this, I'll give you that information. Um, so that if you want to have a try at this, you could have some um, done like that. Um, so laser copies of things, but I wouldn't worry about that um, until we get to that point. And that is why I was thinking of some of these images in this book, you know, there's really high contrast, they're black and white. If I get the, some laser copies done of that, this won't transfer, it's just too, too dry, you need a glossy page. Um, but if I get a laser print of some of these done, I think they'd make really interesting, really interesting transfers. And you know, something like that, I might get that onto my PC, enlarge it and get it printed. But we'll talk about all of that when we come to those sessions. I've missed out, I've just seen them. I've just seen them. Acrylic paint pens, great fun to play with. Um, these are a collection of lovely cheapy ones and they will work fine. Um, I've got, what are they? I've got Colourful Art Co, marks on anything, water-based, so these are acrylics. That's Colourful Art Co, I've got two brands in here. Art Accelerations, no, I'm sure it isn't that. Art Celebrations, nope, don't think it says that. Art it might say Art Celebration, acrylic markers, but basically, you just have a Google around or go to the art shop if you're lucky enough to be near one and get yourself just some acrylic paint pens. Again, these are for a specific techniques, so don't rush off to get these. Wait and see what I'm going to do with them. You can also get um, really nice posh acrylic paint pens, which you know tend to just give a slightly better image. Uh, only because there's a bit more pigment in them. Um, so I've got a few, I might have got five. I've got five, six, six Posca pens. I've got the pastels um, because I really like those and I've got a white one somewhere. Um, to your point, where is my white Posca pen? Oh, hang on, look, I've got seven. That says I must have eight. <laughs> hey, look at that, got more than I thought. Posca pens and then my favourite acrylic pens, um, which I've discovered, are these Thule pens. These are very, um, these are quite fine line ones, but you can build it up. Um, but these are absolutely lovely. Um, these have got, let me find one that's got some pigment on the end of it. You know, these have got loads of pigment in them, and they're really lovely to use. You just charge them up, and they are just gorgeous. And they just, they are very, very opaque. Um, so I will be using some of those as well. So that's another thing to consider. All, you know, the crayons, the 
pans, the china graph, laser prints, magazine prints, you know, just hold your onions for the moment and see if they're things that you fancy doing. Let me check, I haven't missed anything off. Don't think I have, that sounds, that sounds like everything, doesn't it really? Um, Pen, China graph pencil, magazines, laser, yep, 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 yep. So, see, that wasn't that much, was it? You can see why I didn't want to write at all as a list, and it's almost impossible to give a list, um, I think, for these sorts of things. You're better, really, to, you know, have the basics so that you can play and then add things as you want to. So, I will see you um, in the next video where I'm just going to run through some of the things that I've made um using jelly prints just to give you some ideas of some of the things we might do okay so i'll see you in the next video bye for now bye